<laughs> the value of respect. The story of Abraham Lincoln, a value tale by Anne Donegan Johnson. A long time ago, not so very long ago, there lived a man named Abraham Lincoln. He was president of the United States. People listened to Lincoln when he spoke. When he went out to walk, they crowded around him. When he went, <laughs> they uh, almost everyone loved him and admired him. And even those who didn't love him respected him very much. One day after Abraham Lincoln and his son Tad had been out walking, Tad thought about the people who had seen crowding around his father. You know, father, said Tad, I hope that someday people will respect me the way they respect you. They will if you respect them, said Abe. We all usually get back what you give, you know, and you can respect people for many reasons. Of course, you respect them, first of all, because they're human beings. Later, Abe sat looking out a window, watching the squirrels scamp around the White House lawn. He thought about what Tad had said. What we learn when we're, what we learn when we're children is so important, he said to himself. It makes all the difference when we grow up and out into the world. Then Abe's mind went back to the day when he was a child himself. He remembered his mother and father and his sister Sarah, who was two years older. He remembered the one-room log cabin on the farm deep in the wilderness of Kentucky, where they all lived together. There wasn't much furniture in the cabin, for Abe's family had almost no money. The soil on their farm was not good. So Abe's father had to spend long, hard days trying to make his crops grow. Abe's mother worked hard, too, looking after her husband and the children. She made all the clothes for the family. Abe grew so fast she could hardly keep up with him. Abraham, she would say, you grow out of everything. What am I going to do with you? She tried to sound, she tried to sound, sound stern and severe when she said this, but she was really very pleased. She knew that Abe's was, Abe was a strong, healthy boy, happy to play in the woods and help his father with the chores. Sometimes when the sun was warm and the birds were singing, Mrs. Lincoln took Abe and Sarah to play in the stream near their farm. We're lucky to have the beautiful trees around us, she told them, and lucky to have the clean stream to bathe in and the fresh air to breathe. I guess we are, said Abe, and it's a good thing some things are free. We couldn't buy them if they weren't. We're too poor. Being poor is nothing to be ashamed of, said his mother. As long as you're honest and you respect other people, they will, they will respect you no matter how poor you are. Abe's neighbors did not live close by. When Abe wanted to play with his friends, he would have to walk a long distance. Sometimes he went off to play with his friend Austin, and sometimes he got into trouble. One day, when he was crossing a creek, using a fallen log as a footbridge, but it was raining and the log was slippery. Abe's legs went flying out from under him. Abe yelled. Then he landed in the creek with a huge splash. Luckily, Austin saw Abe fall. He ran toward the creek as fast as his legs could carry him. Hang on, Abe, he cried. I'll get you out in a jiffy. He found a long pole and held it toward Abe. Abe grabbed the end of the pole and Austin pulled him to safety. Do you always go swimming in your clothes, Abe? Asked Austin as Abe crawled out of the creek. Aw, oh, stop kidding, replied Abe. Abe was cold and dripping, but he had a laugh in spite of himself. Abe might laugh, but his mother knew that there was more to life than just running in the woods. I'm sending you to school, she said to Abe one day. It's high time you learn to read and write. This didn't sound like fun to Abe. Oh, mother, he said. Hardly anybody around here goes to school. I know, answered his mother. But education is very important. No one will ever listen to you or respect you if you can't even read or write. So Sarah and Abe went to off to school, and they had to hike for two miles on a dirt road to get there. My feet hurt, complained poor Sarah. I sure hope this is going to be worth it. Me too, said Abe. They soon learned to make the time pass quickly on the way to school and home again. Abe and Sarah talked about the things they learned at school. Watch out for wild turkeys. Actually, they didn't learn many of the things that school learn, ch children learn in school today. They weren't very comfortable where they were learning either. There was only a single classroom in the log schoolhouse, 
and the oldest children sat on wooden benches right alongside the younger ones. There were no windows in the school and the children had no books to read. How did they learn? They learned by listening to the teacher and repeating what she said. Now children, she would say, repeat after me, C-A-T spells cat. The children repeated the words over and over again. After a while, they learned how to spell cat. Soon Abe and Sarah could spell quite a few words. When Abe and Sarah came home from school, they always told their mother about the things they had learned. Then they did their chores, then, which they did cheerfully. The children liked to help their mother because they respected her. She was a kind person who took very good care of her family. Abe and Sarah were happy enough in Kentucky, but Mr. Lincoln was not. He was tired of trying to grow enough food for his family on the poor soil of his farm. Children, he said one night, we're going to move to Indiana. Life should be easier there. The soil is better so we can grow bigger crops. Abe was a bit upset when he heard this. Do you mean I have to leave all my friends, he said. Abe was, a, uh, don't worry, said his mother. You'll make a lot new, of new friends when we get to Indiana. Abe knew this was probably not true, but he still felt lonely. Now, in those days, the country was very different from the way it is today. There were no cars or buses and no smooth roads to travel on. So the trip to Indiana was a great adventure. The Lincoln family began their journey on horseback. They borrowed, then they borrowed a wagon and pulled other belongings on it. As they traveled along, the roads began to get narrower and narrower. Are we nearly there? asked Abe. They began to finally chop down bushes in order to move the wagon. Just about, said Mr. Lincoln, and indeed they soon reached a nice clearing, and Mr. Lincoln decided that they had come to the end of their journey. At last they had found a good place to build a cabin. They wanted to get to sleep they wanted to get shelter up quickly so they would be protected. Everyone pitched in to help. Abe was working so hard he could have when he imagined he saw a squirrel hop onto a tree stump. Hi, Abe, said the squirrel. No need to be lonely around here. You and I could be friends. Abe was pretending. He laughed because he realized that the squirrel was just a creature that he had made up from getting to keep from feeling sad about the friends he had left behind in Kentucky. When the cabin was finished, Abe invited his little make-believe friend, the talking squirrel, to move in with him. The cabin was a half-faced camp because it had only three sides. The open side was where the Lincolns built their fires and cooked their meals. Fire says we're going to build... Father says we're going to build a bigger, nicer cabin soon, said Abe, as he and the squirrel snuggled down on the bed of dried leaves. The next year, the Lincolns did build a better cabin, but before they had lived in it long, a great sadness came to them. Mrs. Lincoln died of a sickness that could not be cured in those days. Abe and Sarah felt terribly lonely. Mr. Lincoln did his best to cheer them up. Your mother would not want us to sit around here being sad all the time, he said. She'd want us to keep busy and try to be happy. Abe and Sarah knew their father was right, and they did try to keep busy. There was a lot to do. Water had to be brought up from the nearby spring. Clothes had to be scrubbed in a big wooden tub. Food had to be cooked in the fireplace, and bread had to be baked in the outdoor oven. The dirt floor had to be swept with a broom made of twigs. Sarah and Abe did their best, but the work never seemed to get finished. Sometimes long after the sun had set, they were still gathering wood for the fire. Sarah and Abe worked hard and tried to be brave, but they missed their mother very much. Mr. Lincoln respected them for trying, but he could see how terribly lonely they were. Children, said Mr. Lincoln one day, I'm going away for a little while. When I return, I might have a surprise for you. What do you think the surprise could be? Mr. Lincoln returned home with his surprise in a few weeks. He had a new wife whose name was Sarah. Sarah was a widow who Mr. Lincoln had known for a long time. They also had Sarah's two daughters, Sarah and Matilda, and her son, John. Sarah and Abe could not believe their eyes. What dear children, said their new stepmother as she reached out her arms to give Abe and Sarah a big hug. We're all going to be such a big, nice, happy family. I'm getting mixed up, said Abe's little friend, the squirrel. There are so many people named Sarah around here. Abe looked at the wagon that had carried his new family to the farm. He saw that it was filled with wonderful things. There were tables and chairs and pots and pans and the softest feather mattress you could possibly imagine. <laughs> the new Mr. Mrs. Lincoln hurried excitedly into the cabin 
that was to be her new home. She looked at the dust and the beds that were made out of leaves. She frowned at the broken furniture. We're going to get rid of all this, she said in a cheery way. We're going to get rid of the no loneliness, too. From now on, we'll have only bright, happy things around here. That night, Abe slept in a real bed for the first time. He nestled down in a feather mattress that is with his head on a soft pillow, and he couldn't believe that anything could feel so warm and cozy. I feel sorry for people who do not have a real bed to sleep in, Abe said to his little friend. The squirrel snuggled down beside him. I agree, he said in a sleepy little voice. I'm warm as toast. Time passed joyfully now, and Abe grew older and taller and stronger. He helped his father more and more. He plowed and planted, and he chopped down trees with his double-edged axe. Wow, said the other boys. Just look at Abe Lincoln. Uh, he's the biggest boy around here. Don't ever get into a fight with him. He'll probably throw you right over a fence. If Abe heard the others talk, he didn't pay any attention. He was much too busy to be thinking of fights. But he was never too busy to show his stepmother that he loved her. One day he came in from the field, swept her off her feet, and lifted her into the air. Oh, Abe Lincoln, you put me down right now, she said. All that heavy work you do may make your body grow, but reading and learning is just as important. They make your mind grow. I'm going to try to get you a lot of books so you can read and learn things. Abe soon found that he really enjoyed reading. He sat by the fire at night while the others were asleep, and he read every book he could find. He didn't have any paper to write on, so he used a wooden shovel. He wrote on it with a bit of charcoal. Golly, there's a lot to learn, said the squirrel. You bet there is, agreed Abe. I guess I'll never know it all. Sometimes Abe couldn't just put his books down. Once in a while, he tried to read and do his chores at the same time. Have you ever done that? I can't believe it, said the little squirrel. You may have learned lots, you may learn lots of great things from those books, but you forget how to plow a straight line. Abe laughed when his make-believe friend scolded him, and he tried to pay more attention to his work. As he grew older, Abe didn't always have time to chat with the squirrel. He wanted to be with people. He liked to listen to them and find out what they thought. He liked to tell them about the things he read, and he made up jokes to set them all laughing. I like to talk with Abe Lincoln, said one man in the village. I feel like he really respects me, and he wants to hear what I have to say. I like the way he explains things, said another man. He makes things seem so simple. One evening, a wealthy farmer named James Gently came to Abe. Abe, you're an honest man and a strong one, he said. Would you be willing to take my goods down to New Orleans on a flatboat? Yes, sir, Mr. Gent Gentry, replied Abe. Abe had never been to a big city like New Orleans. He was terribly excited when he looked at Mr. Gentry's map. It's a long way, he said, a thousand miles. You don't have to go alone, Abe, said Mr. Gentry. My son, Alan, will go with you. Of course, Abe wanted to go. Mr. Gentry watched as he and Alan loaded the flatboat. It was a sturdy craft with a little shelter on the deck, two sets of oars, and a steering pole. It'll be a dangerous trip, warned Mr. Gentry. There are strong currents in the river, and bandits might try to attack you. You'll have to be careful. You'll need all the strength you have. When the boat was loaded with its cargo of apples, pork, and potatoes, Abe and Alan guided it down the Ohio River and into the great Mississippi. Suddenly, Abe knew why Alan's father had said he would need all his strength. Strong currents caught the flatboat and set it spinning and speeding down the stream. It was all Abe could do to steer clear of the big rocks that seemed to jump out at them. Easy there, Abe, cried the squirrel. Can't we go a little slower? I can't stay on my feet. When they stopped for the night, Abe and Alan tied the flatboat to a tree on the riverbank. Then they settled down to rest until morning. That was a rough day, said the squirrel one evening. I'm worn out. Tomorrow could be just as bad, warned Abe. But that same night, a new danger threatened them. What do you think it was? River bandits. Mm -hmm. ah. As darkness fell, seven of those dangerous thieves crept out from behind the trees. There's a rich cargo on that flatbed, said one of the bandits. And there's only two men to protect it. Come on, they won't give us much trouble. The bandits rushed toward the boat. And what do you suppose happened then? 
Abe jumped up. He grabbed a stout stick and swung it with all the strength he had. The river bandits shouted and yelled. They tried to cover their heads with their arms. That'll teach you to try to rob us, roared Abe. Next time, have a little respect, cried the squirrel. One by one, the bandits jumped off the flatboat and ran away into the night. Abe and Alan jumped to the shore and chased after them, but the thieves disappeared into the shadow, like fr into the woods like frightened shadows. Maybe they'll come back, said the squirrel, but it wouldn't surprise me if they simply give up being bandits. Being a bandit doesn't pay when Abe Lincoln's around, said the squirrel. Abe, Alan looked at Abe with a new respect. You're as strong as a half a dozen men, he said. Maybe, said Abe. But that doesn't stop me from getting that didn't stop me from getting a whack on the head. Abe took out his handkerchief and bandaged the cut over his eye. Abe and Alan didn't meet any more bandits on the river. They reached New Orleans safely and unloaded their cargo. Then they set out to explore the city. Abe couldn't believe his eyes. He had never seen such elegant buildings. He'd never seen so many different kinds of people. And he'd never heard the kinds of music being played in the streets. And wherever he went, delicious smells floated in the air. This is more exciting than I ever imagined, said Abe to Alan. But suddenly, Abe and Alan turned a corner and came upon a big square. And there was something that Abe would never forget. Do you know what it was? It was a slave market. Abe saw black men and women and children chained together. They were being sold as if they were horses, sheep, or cows. Of course, Abe had heard about slavery, but he had never before seen people treated as if they were animals. Alan, those black people are human beings too, said Abe. They deserve respect, just like everyone else. At that time, it was not unusual to sell black people in slave markets. They had no rights at all and they had to do whatever their masters told them to do. Someday, said Abe Lincoln, I'm going to try to put a stop to things like that. Alan looked at Abe, and he believed it. When Abe Lincoln said something, he meant it. Abe returned home, but he could not forget what he had seen in the slave market. He told his friends about the chains and how husbands were separated from their wives and children were taken away from their parents and sold to new masters, said Abe. The black people have feelings just as we do. How can anyone treat a human being that way with no respect? No one could answer Abe's questions, but almost everyone Abe talked to agreed that slavery was a terrible thing. Abe didn't forget the black people or any other people who weren't treated fairly. Soon I'll be on my own, he said to his friend the squirrel. I'll go out into the world and talk with people. I'd like to to know what they really need and how I can help them. That's great, said the squirrel, and of course you can help them. You respect people, no matter who they are. So almost everyone respects you. When it was time for Abe to leave home and strike out on his own, he put his few belongings into a handkerchief and tied it to his stick. Then he said goodbye to his family and friends. I've learned so much from all of you, he said. I'll never forget you. We'll never forget you either said his little friend, the squirrel. He waved goodbye as Abe headed out into the world to begin a new life. First, Abe headed for Salem, Illinois. He got a job tending store, and at night he studied law books so he could become a lawyer. The people who knew him were sure that Abe would be a great lawyer. Abe Lincoln cares about people, and he is honest, they said. Abe Lincoln could do the job Abe met many people when he became a lawyer. They respected him because he listened to them. They knew he cared. And after a while, Abe was elected to represent them in the state legislature. Now Abe was really busy fighting for the rights of other people. Later, he got married and had children of his own. There was another election for Abe. This time, he represented the people in the Congress of the United States. While he was in Washington, he showed that he would treat everyone with respect. Later, when a man named Douglas spoke out in favor of slavery, Abe argued against him. He told the people how wrong it was to have slaves. People all over the country now knew of Abe Lincoln. 
By this time, there was trouble in the country. The southern states said they would form their own country if the northerners would not let them keep their slaves. Could Abe save the country from being divided? The people thought he could, and they elected him president. A long war, called the Civil War, started shortly after he became president. During this war, Abe wrote a famous paper called The Emancipation Proclamation, which freed all the slaves in the United States. Abe Lincoln did save the country from being divided, and he gained the respect of people everywhere, which lasts until this day. Abraham Lincoln realized that the things he learned in his childhood brought happiness to him throughout his life. Respect for others and being respected by them made Abe a happy person. If happiness is important to you, maybe you want to bring respect into your life too.